All right, let's talk about how to shoot a video podcast from beginning to end. I want to cover everything from what microphones to buy, what lights to buy, audio interfaces, switchers, how many cameras you need, what camera angles to use, what lenses, all the post-production of editing together a podcast, how to upload it. We're going to cover it all. I recently started somewhat of a podcast and I've been helping other people start podcasts and it's honestly a big learning curve. And so I wanted to help you guys out, give you a blueprint. And this video you're watching on YouTube is a condensed version of a larger mini course called Podcast Pro that you can check out at fulltimefilmmaker.com. So link will be in the description. If you enjoy this video, learn some good tips and want to learn more, make sure to check that out. So let's start first by talking about what microphone to buy. Now the microphone is going to be your most important thing within a podcast because podcasts can be just audio only. Now, the most popular microphone out there is the Shure SM7B, which is what you're listening to right now. The SM7B is going to come in around $400 microphone only. It is probably the most popular microphone because it's good looking, it's easy to have here in frame, and it has a good sound. But a popular alternative to this that's a little bit cheaper is the MV7, which is Shure's USB version of this. An even cheaper alternative to that would be the Rode Pod Mic, which you can get for just $100. That too will have to have an XLR cable going into an audio interface. And then on the cheapest end is going to be the FTF gear mic that you can get for just $70. And that's a USB mic, so it doesn't require any audio interfaces. And that's going to come with a boom arm, a desk stand, a pop filter, everything you need to get up and running for just $70. And the last thing to mention on the SM7B is it's also a very low sensitivity microphone. So you actually are going to need what's called a cloud lifter, which is going to raise the gain going into your audio interface, which is going to cost you another $100, $150. Now, a few pros and cons to be aware of, of each of these microphones, the FTF gear mic, does allow you to control the gain, which is the volume. However, if you talk too loud into that one, it's still going to distort even if your gain is turned down really low. But as long as you're talking in a normal volume like this, it is a great bang for buck microphone. The Rode Pod mic, in my opinion, sounds a little bit thin. The low end seems to be missing just a tad on that guy. So you are going to have to do some EQ with that to get it to sound, in my opinion, the way that I would want it to sound. And I feel like it picks up quite a bit of desk noise, handling noise, if you have it on one of the desk stands. So be careful with that one. Also, if you're not going to be using the pop filters that come with them, because they do look really cool without it, it does give to plosives quite a bit more. So you're going to hear those p -p sounds quite a bit more. And then the SM7B, like I said, it's a little bit flat, so you're going to have to do some EQ with this guy. Uh, but overall, all these are great microphones, but the microphone is just the beginning. Once you get a microphone, you're also going to need, unless it's a USB mic that goes directly into your computer, you're also going to need an audio interface. So we'll talk about that next. So which audio interface should you buy? Again, if you've bought a USB microphone, you're not going to need one. You can go straight into your computer. So that's one of the great benefits of those. However, your nicer microphones are going to be going into XLR. So you're going to need to not only pick up an XLR cable to be able to plug into the microphone, but it's going to have to go go into an audio interface, which is then going to allow you to plug that into your computer. On the low end, I have used what's called the Scarlett Solo. You can pick up for $130 right now for one input or $190 for two inputs. And I've used these for many years and they work great. I have noticed a little bit more of a hiss, a little bit of a, a background hum. So that's what you're going to get with some of the cheaper audio interfaces, a little bit more background noise. Now, the one I use for a lot of mine is called an Apollo Twin X, which is going to run you about $1,000. It is a bit overkill for what you're going to need, but I love it. It's super high quality. But in the middle of these options is what I would recommend for a lot of podcasters, and that is called the Rodecaster Pro 2. And here's a few reasons why I'd recommend this specifically for those doing podcasts. Number one is that if you're using an SM7B, like I mentioned, it has a higher noise floor. You're going to need to use a cloud lifter. But with this guy, with the Rodecaster, Caster Pro 2, you actually don't need a cloud lifter. The second thing is that it comes with presets for a lot of the popular microphones, the SM7B being one of them. And they have a few different options of neutral, podcast, or studio options that are going to give you flatter or more punchier uh, sounds to it. But for those who don't want to mess with EQ and learn how to use all these different tools to mix your audio and make it sound better, these presets are pretty awesome. I still like to do a few things after, even with the presets. 
But the other main thing that I like about it and the reason why I use it for podcasting is that you can have redundant recording. If there's any goof up on your computer, this rarely happens, but every once in a while, if I'm recording into Logic X, it can happen to where it stops recording in the computer. And unless I'm looking at it and monitoring it, I'm not gonna know it stopped. And then I'm out of luck. I don't have that audio. With the Rodecaster, you can be recording into Logic X, but you can also plug in a micro SD and be recording to that internally in the Rodecaster Pro 2 as well. That is on the more expensive end, but eventually that would be my recommendation for podcasting. And as far as XLR cables, I recommend Mogami. They are the best, highest quality XLR cables I've used. Now, the last thing to mention with audio gear is acoustic treatment. Now, this whole room that I'm in right now, we'll cut to a shot, is completely acoustically treated and so that you're not hearing reverb, like the echo bouncing off of walls. And that's a huge mistake I see in a lot of podcasts. But I'll post a link in the description where you guys can get these acoustic blankets. They're about $100 a piece. You get two or three of those, put them up in your recording space all around you, and that's going to make a world of a difference in the quality of the audio and make it sound a lot more professional. So that's pretty much it for audio gear. Next, let's talk about tips for actual mic placement and use. Now, main mistakes you're going to see with audio with podcasters is they're either going to be too far away. This is like a foot away from the microphone. It can be doable, but it's not ideal for these types of microphones. And these microphones can be used as close. But one of the challenges with it being too close is you're going to hear plosives a lot more. I like to have it just an inch or so from my mouth and have it to the side so that my air is pushing out in front of the mic instead of directly into the mic to avoid those plosives. Now you could also put an extra pop filter on here or the bigger pop filter it comes with. However, it's gonna give you a different sound. It's not gonna sound quite as clear and it doesn't look quite as good. Now the other thing to pay attention to is the gain level, either on your microphone, if it has one on the microphone, if it's a USB mic or on your audio interface, you wanna make sure that you've set your gain levels and you've tested the audio to make sure it's sitting between negative six at the highest to about negative 18 at the lowest decibels. But once you have your audio dialed in next for a video podcast specifically, the next most important thing is going to be your lighting. So we'll talk about that next. I get asked all the time, how do you light for two different people? And this is the most common way that I see is having one light over the top of each person that's shining on the opposite person. Because if you just have lights pointing this way, it's all gonna be frontal light and there's not gonna be very much character, very much dimension, very much depth. Obviously it depends on the look you're going for, but specifically for two person setups, we have an Aperture 300X here and an Amaron 200X over here. And about the smallest dome I'd recommend getting is about a three foot dome. You can find smaller lights like a ring light, for example, is probably the cheapest light I'd recommend getting, but a ring light's not gonna be very soft. And the softer the light, the more forgiving it's gonna be on imperfections on the skin. But ideally you put a sheet between it or something to diffuse it, to make it even softer, or you buy something nicer. The next step up from a ring light would be something like an Amaran 600X and then pick up a $50 dome on Amazon and suddenly have a much softer, much higher quality light that's gonna be bright enough for most scenarios. You'll notice I also have a FTF gear lamp tube light over here, and that's just lighting up this plant over here. This is before and after. So you see it just lights up that tree a little bit, makes it a little bit less dramatic on the background. And we also have a hair light that is right above me up here. That is an Amaran 600X up there. And that's just allowing me to have a little bit of separation here from the back wall. And then coming back over to this spot, I've had this turned off till now, but I have an Aperture 600X, which is overkill. It doesn't need to be that nice of a light, but it's what I have, so we used it. And that has a gobo on it, which when turned on looks like window light coming in from the side there, which lights up that tree next to me. This is a lamp back here, floor lamp. And inside that lamp, I have two B7Cs from Aperture as well. So again, just making the background a little bit less dramatic. And then here is my key light on and off so you can see what that's doing. So two, three people set up. This is a very common way to do it. But we're now gonna move over to a different lighting setup to give you some other ideas. This is going to be also a two person setup. So instead of two key lights each overhead on each person, instead we have a lantern softbox that you just put over top of both people it is a little bit raccoon eye-ish. And so what I have to help out with that is an Amaron T4C tube light that I will turn off and on here so you can see what that's doing. 
So that's off and on. Now you can make that fill light even more dramatic if you wanna really make this fill in. So you can see that on and off. And then in the background, that's a gobo light you see on the back there. That is what is shining on the back wall. And I will turn that off and on now. So you see that just gives a little bit of dimension to the back wall so it's not just blank. And I believe that's a 300X that that light is on. And then over here, we have tube lights. These are actually Nanlite tube lights. So now you can see what it looks like without those back there. This could totally work as well. And then up here, you'll see we have a hair light. This is the F22C from Amaran. Let me turn that on and off so you can see what that's doing. You see how it's just highlighting my hair and the chairs right here giving them a little bit more dimension so you can see them popping out. Also on the microphones. So could you get by with just this key light? No fill light or hair light? Yeah. And then if you throw out the gobo, this is just the key lights with those splashes of color on the background. Here's without the key light, which is an Amaran 100X, by the way. So we definitely want that on. Now let's throw back on our hair light separating us from the background a little better. Now here's our tube light to give us a little more fill light. And then that gobo back there to make things a little more interesting. So let's now go over to our third scenario and we'll show you how to light that with just one light. All right, so our last setup here is going to be in our den. So we got $700 camera setup, kit lens, Amaran 600X with a $50 dome on there, and then a $70 condenser mic. Then you just need obviously a computer to plug that into. So here is what the audio sounds like and what the video looks like with this setup. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest differences you'll notice in this room is it's not acoustically treated. And this is honestly what a lot of people's podcasts are. Except at least I have a microphone. A lot of people aren't even using a microphone like this. They're just using a lav mic or a web webcam or the computer microphone. So you look over here, we've got a sound blanket on a stand. And so what I would do is just bring this nice and tight into myself like this. And it doesn't have to be on a nice stand like this, but this is basically a C stand on wheels. So this is what it looks and sounds like in a very normal room that doesn't have any acoustic treatment besides this blanket that I've brought in. Really cheap camera on a really cheap tripod. That's an FTF gear tripod as well. $70, all in were around $1,000, and you suddenly have an awesome video podcast ready to go. This is going straight into the computer, recording on a free app in GarageBand. We'll then export that out, stick it into our editing program, and we're good to go. So let's talk about what camera to buy, camera and lens setup to get when filming a podcast. Notice we're talking about this after we've talked about audio gear, after we've talked about lighting gear, and that is for a reason. If you have good audio and you have good lighting, then your phone can work. And that's the first thing I'd recommend. If you're on a budget, just use your phone. People mostly care about the audio. So if that's taken care of, and if they can see your face and you're well lit, then the phone quality is going to be good enough. Now on the cheapest end, we showed you in our den setup there that we had a Canon R50 with a kit lens. That's going to be your cheapest option, as cheap as I would go. Just use your phone if you're not going to invest in a real camera. Now a lot of the older cameras are going to limit you to 30 minutes of recording. Do not get 30 minutes recording limited cameras for podcasting because most podcast episodes are going to be at least an hour. Cameras that can film for an hour can work like that R50 that I have. Kind of pushing it though, I'd get one that can go two hours. The next camera for Canons that can go two hours is going to be the R10, which is going to come in at $1,000. So that's on the Canon side. On the Sony side, I'd get the Sony ZV-E10 and that's going to allow you to record for up to 13 hours. Now what I'm using here is the Sony A7S III. Obviously, that's ideal. Over in this room, we have two C70s. Obviously, that's going to get very expensive. And so more importantly than the camera bodies is going to be lenses. But you want to focus on lenses that can stop down to low apertures. And the reason for that is because low aperture lenses are going to allow you to have that shallow depth of field, that background blur. So I look for a lens that can go down to a 1.4 aperture if possible. Again, in the den setup, we had a kit lens, which is an 18 millimeter on there. And that's on a 1.6 
crop sensor camera, which brings the focal length to about a 29 millimeter. So that's what you saw over there. This is a 35 millimeter that you're seeing right now on the Sony a7S III. And then over here with the C70 cameras, we have 50 millimeter lenses over there. I think for medium shots, which is what this is, 35 to 50 millimeter is the most common. I just keep it medium so that they can move freely and not move out of frame. If you have a tight shot on them and they move too far, you're gonna lose them from the shot. And so just be aware of that, be careful. You need a camera, you need a lens. You also need a tripod, forgot to mention that. Again, the FTF gear tripod is the cheapest I'd recommend. That's gonna come in at just $70. Most of the ones I use are gonna be Manfrotto's, which are gonna come in around $200. But one thing I would recommend getting for all podcasting is a dummy battery that can plug into an outlet into your wall. You don't wanna have to be constantly switching out the batteries and risk the battery going out in the middle of a podcast. So that's Pretty much it for camera gear focus on the lighting focus on the audio and then pick up a camera that's going to allow you to film your face and you'll be good to go with gear all right let's now talk about how to actually film a podcast let's go through the whole process together all right so first question is how many cameras need to be filming? I would say if you're gonna be interviewing a second person, I would say having two cameras is ideal. Now you could just do one as we'll show over in the tech setup. You want these to be at least 30 degrees apart, these two camera angles. And these are actually 90 degrees apart, as you can see here. And I actually have a third camera set up over here in the R7, and that's gonna be showing both of these guys at the exact same time. So with our audio, we have that going into the Rodecaster Pro 2 over here, as I mentioned earlier. And then the Rodecaster is going into our MacBook, and then you see here that we are recording on Logic Pro X. And then right here, we have what's called an Ada Mini Pro ISO. But the Ada Mini Pro allows you to hook HDMIs from each of those three cameras into the Ada Mini Pro. And then I'm able to switch between each of these camera angles. It will save me a file of those cuts I've made so that I can have the podcast video already cut up. So if you have an extra person, somebody who's gonna be watching the cameras and monitoring audio anyway, you might as well get one of these Ada Mini Pros and have them be cutting in real time. Carter and I are gonna have a little podcast conversation and show you how this all works in real time. So welcome to the show today. This is the So and So Show. My name is Parker Walbeck, and today we have with us Carter Hogan. Good buddy of mine and the manager at Full Time Filmmaker. Carter, good to have you here. Good to be here. Carter, where are you from? Tell us about your family. Give us a quick background. Oh, yeah. So, you know, Carter Hogan, originally from Salt Lake City, moved down. That's to, really interesting. Yeah. So tell me about your family. So we have a couple people in it and we... That's a lot of people. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. I love your hat, by the way. Really good hat. I brought it first. I want that. Yeah. on the record. I was going to wear that hat, but he wore that. And so I didn't wear a hat. So thanks for making me change my outfit you did last put me second. You the, the style and brand of hats. So I'll give you- It is a good one. Okay. okay. So that is how you film a podcast, just to give you an idea. Now I want to show you in post-production how I would edit that together. First, I'm going to import my footage. Then I'll just drag in my video files to start a new sequence. Then I'm going to drag them on top of each other. Then bring in each of my separate audio files. And then the easiest way to sync these up is just highlight all, right click, synchronize audio, make sure it's on audio and hit OK. So next I'm going to unlink the camera audio and delete those. We don't need those anymore. And now we're just going to start cutting back and forth between camera angles depending on who's talking. Now the easiest way to do this is just to find when we switch off. You zoom in here and you can see this is when I stop talking, when Carter starts talking. So you're just going to come in here and I have the keyboard shortcut V allowing me to enable and disable this or right click enable and then B for my blade tool. By the way, you can download all my keyboard shortcuts to do all these that I'm doing and then push V and now we start watching and cutting. Welcome to the show today. This is the So and So Show. My name is Parker Walbeck and today we have with us Carter Hogan. So right before Carter says good to be here, we're going to cut to him have you here. Good to be here. And I'm going to leave his smile on there for just a minute and then cut back to me. Originally from Salt Lake City, moved down. And then right here, I cut him off. So let's cut to me cutting him off until I stop cutting him off. And again, I'm just looking at the waves here and just making those cuts next to those. And then I'm just making projected cuts, something like that. People in it 
and we that's a lot of people yeah so we're going to cut this short and just come to the very end here if you have any further questions please let me know and pretend like that was the end so cut off the rest that could be the end you could export that out upload it as is i would however recommend that you put some intro and outro music now the intro and outro music that i've been using for years on my full-time filmmaker YouTube channel is by By The Way May, and everyone knows who hears that song, that that is a full-time filmmaker tutorial intro song. And that song specifically can be found on Musicbed, and they have been my go-to website for licensing music for several years now, and they are the sponsor of today's video. Now, personally, I believe that Musicbed has the highest quality music out there of any other licensing platform. They have over a thousand incredibly talented artists and over 40,000 songs to choose from, some of my favorites to use are Tony Anderson, Chapters, Ryan Taubert, By The Way May, just to name a few. But the difference at Musicbed is the quality cinematic nature of the music. It just feels like music you'd actually hear in a film score or in a high-end commercial rather than these cheap corporate jingles. And finding the right song you need is easy with their advanced parameters like genre, mood, and even beats per minute and key. And specific to podcasting, they now have a podcast subscription as well. So if you're ready to take your projects and film to the next level, go hear the difference yourself and sign up for a free account at Musicbed and use code Fulltime Filmmaker at checkout to receive one free month with your purchase of an annual subscription. So let's pull in now our Musicbed song from By the Way May. And we're not going to talk about this in this video, but we have a separate video inside the course talking about how to create logos and logo animations. But I'm also going to pull in my FTF intro logo animation. Welcome to the show today. This is the So and So Show. My name is Parker Walbeck, and today we have so whatever music you find, just adjust that volume so it's not overpowering the audio. I personally only have it last about 15 to 30 seconds, depending on what the intro sounds like. So about right there, I'm just gonna cut it off and then add a little applied default transition and fade it out over time. But now we're gonna find the point where the last beat hits on the outro. If you have any further questions, please let me know. And then we'll just fade that in towards the end here. Now the last thing I would do is add any audio effects. We're not gonna cover this in depth here. You can watch full videos talking about each of these inside the course, but the main audio effects I use is gonna be an EQ, a compressor, a limiter, some normalization, some mouth declick, Sometimes I'll use denoising. And the audio that I've already dragged into our timeline has already been processed before I brought it in. And I do all of my processing in Logic Pro. And the plugins I use are called Fab Filter plugins. And then I use two plugins from Isotope RX Elements, one being voice denoise and one being mouth declick. And a lot of the paid plugins I mentioned, you can find free versions within most editing softwares. For EQ, I use Parametric Equalizer. Then I'll hit Edit. And I always add a high pass filter. That's just gonna get rid of any low end rumble or plosives. So that is a must. I always do that first. And depending on the microphone and the speaker will depend on what I'll do here in EQ. But usually we'll boost the high end a little bit and I'll usually boost the low end just a little bit as well. You guys put a pop filter on that. Get like one of these big pop filters because you don't care how it looks. Okay, so just very subtle, just adding a little bit more punch to the audio with EQ. Next, I'd put on a compressor. For that, I use Dynamics, so drag that on. Come to Edit, and I use a preset called Soft Compression. And I usually adjust this ratio to 3. Turn on the limiter so it doesn't go above negative 1 decibels. And then depending on how loud I record will depend on how much makeup gain I'll add here. Avoid those plosives at all cost if you're not doing video. So you see over here, we're in the negative 12 to negative 6 range. I want to bring that up just a tad more, so I might bring this up to maybe six or seven. Put a pop filter on that. Get like one of these big pop filters because you don't care how it looks. And again, we're not going to get into this in depth, but I'd also recommend downloading what's called Yulian Loudness Meter. This is a free plugin. And while you're listening back to your audio, you want to be looking at the integrated LUFS, Spotify, and a lot of these platforms recommend between negative 14 and negative 18 dBs. It's one of the biggest things you're going to hear in podcasts that might drive you nuts. So I'm about a negative 21, which means I want to bring this up a tad more. And you can do that by pushing G on your keyboard, hitting normalize, max peak audio, put it to negative one. And then watch my waveforms down here. 
They all jumped up and normalized to a higher volume. Those plosives, those air pockets, are going to be going straight into the microphone. So now we're at about a negative 17 LUFS, which is in that zone. And the last effects I mentioned that are going to be paid is going to be an RXD noise. This is going to get rid of any of the background fuzz. So if you come to just a part with no audio. So if you put this on, come to edit, you can adjust how much you want it to be working. I'm usually around a four, five, six zone, but if it's really noisy, you might want to boost that up. So here's before and after. As you can see, it just takes away some of that background fuzz. And I think that's only a $30 plugin, so it's not too expensive. But the last thing I would do, I think you have to buy their $200 package on this one. But this one's called Mouth Declick. And this is just going to take away all the mouth noises when you speak. Come to Edit. I usually have Sensitivity at 5. Click Widening at 2.5. Let's listen to this with and without. Making us, separating us from the background a little better. Now with making us, separating us from the background a little better. I highly recommend that. Now that I use that, I recognize so many mouth noises in people's audio. At this point, we'll just come up to File, Export, Media, name it whatever you will, where you want. And for most podcasts, you're probably good just to export it out at 1080p. I just use the YouTube preset within the H.264 format. And then hit export and you're ready to now upload your podcast, which we'll talk about next. How do you upload a podcast? Now, it's not exactly straightforward. I want to show you in this video how to do it with a free option called Anchor FM. So type that into Google. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, anchor.fm. Go to login, hit sign up, put in your information, hit sign up. Let's make your first episode. Let's do it. So I have a file ready to go. I'm going to upload a video file by hitting browse, come to a file that I want to upload. And it's going to ask if you want an audio episode or video episode. I'm going to say video. Then you're going to title it whatever you want. Put a description, customize if there's a certain season number, or episode number you want this to be. Upload some episode art if you have any. All right, so once that has finished uploading, now we're gonna hit next. And now we get to set up our podcast. I'm gonna call this True Millennial. Give it a description, put in a category, podcast language, English. Hit continue. Upload some cover art. Continue, update. Now it says ready to publish. This will make your podcast available on Spotify. So we'll hit publish and they will let us know when it is ready on Spotify. Now, if you wanna put this on other platforms, you have what's called an RSS distribution feed. So you'll use this link right here to then upload this to other platforms. And then as soon as they notify you when it's ready on Spotify, you'll be able to hit listen on Spotify and you'll be able to start listening to and sharing your podcast. So that is how you create a podcast from A to Z. Again, this was a compressed version, just trying to give you all the steps. So if you want more in-depth, detailed instructions on each of these steps and additional steps like using StreamYard to do virtual interviews or how to monetize your podcast to actually make them sustainable or tips and tricks on how to get more views and actually make your podcast engaging, then make sure to check out links below to join our course, Podcast Pro, or that mini course is also included inside full-time filming Maker, our main course with over 600 tutorials link also in the description below but that's all i got for you hopefully you got some good insights on how to get your podcast off the ground don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this and if you have any further questions please let me know